Thank you for joining Think Build Launch Podcast. This program is an extension of Marl Startup Studio. Marl Startup Studio was started to support students and first time founders of all ages while they are at the idea stage of their startup. We believe there are so many ideas in our community that get missed simply because people do not yet know how to put their structure of their idea into an actionable plan, and that's exactly what we do. As we get started today, I want to say that I do hope to see as many people as possible at Marl on Main at the Mercantile of Maine down at Sibley Square, November 4th from 530 to 730. We're building a bridge between the Frederick Douglass Susan B. Anthony Bridge to the Golden Gate Bridge, and this represents economic inclusion and increased deal flow between Rochester and the Silicon Valley. We have three primary goals with this. One is to help optimize the 19 colleges and university students that we have here in the talent pool in the region, help get additional funding to the existing startup community, and also continue to get Rochester on the map as a robust entrepreneurial ecosystem. To that end, our guest today is Jim Sinal, the president of NextCore and the managing director of Rochester Angel Network, who's been a vital part of economic development and in the startup space for at least since 2003, when I met him for the very first time. Thank you for being part of Marl on Maine, and thank you for joining us today, Jim. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, having been part of the Rochester uh, startup and economic development for quite a while, what are some signals that you are now seeing indicating that we're making some progress to thrive? Well, I think there have been a lot of them, and sometimes you don't realize them until you look in your rearview mirror a little bit. But I, I'd say, you know, we probably started, um, I'd say, hitting the tipping point or at least feeling that the momentum was really happening. I'm going to say maybe about five years ago. Um, unfortunately, COVID happened then, and I think it slowed things down a little, but um, it's still going. And the signals for that are things like um, you just see more deals and you see more entrepreneurs and you see more deal flow. You see more programs and activities popping up, you know, startup weeks and startup weekends and networking events. Um, you see more deals getting done. And then you also see more out of town investors investing in the Rochester area or upstate New York area. And so kind of when you look at sort of the totality of all those things happening, um, at least to me, you know, it feels like you're kind of past the tipping point and, and things are really starting to happen. It's, it's really neat that you have that kind of vantage point to kind of see where we've been and where we're headed in that way. Uh, you made the choice um, to move downtown. And I'm wondering, you know, you are actually also located at Sibley Square. Why is being downtown such an important part, uh, such an important decision for the community and for startups? Well, when I first took the job at NextCore, um, which was called High Tech Rochester at the time, um, it was one of the first things that I wanted to do was to try to move downtown and create some energy downtown. There really wasn't back then, now we're talking, this is probably seven years ago, we started the journey. Um, there wasn't a visible, obvious place for startups to go. Um, there were programs in town, there were other things, but you know, there wasn't like people would say, hey, if you're gonna take a trip to somewhere, you know you all go to the Rochester airport and that's the starting point. There wasn't a starting point. So we said, that is something that our community needs. We also looked around the country at what was happening in other tech hubs. There was um, studies by the Brookings Institute about the rise of innovation districts where creative collisions happen. And so you took all of that together and we sort of made the proposal and, and drummed up a lot of community interest through the, the um, regional council and others to create that hub of entrepreneurial activity downtown, which is where we are today. And you have, um, I think, one of the most remarkable things about your programming at NextCore is that you actually have several different types of accelerators going on. And, and so you're really not only are you at the epicenter of the city, but you're in the op epicenter of so many um, startup activities. Can you give us a little bit of a preview for some people that are not aware of all the programs that you have? Sure. Um, and we, we do have a lot of programs today and uh, we've grown a lot. Um, you know, 10 years ago, we were probably a two program entity and, and uh, 12 employees. And now we're about 30 employees and about six programs, but they include our incubator. So that's something we've always done. And an incubator um, is something that startups join. They're surrounded by resources to help them grow their business. Um, and they graduate out when they have revenues and they're producing um, products, et cetera, but also several accelerators. And so 
just for terminology for listeners, an accelerator is typically a time-bound cohort-based program. It might be three, six, or nine months long. There's an application process to get in. Oftentimes, companies in the accelerator program also get funding. So we operate um, four accelerator programs today. Illuminate is our largest. It's focused on optics and photonics and imaging. It's the largest one in the world. We invest $3 million a year into 10 teams. Uh, we just finished our fifth cohort, so we have 50 companies in that portfolio. We have two in the climate tech sector, one at the very earliest stage called Venture, which actually helps form businesses from ideas and research, and one called Scale for Climate Tech, which helps take companies at the prototype stage and figures out how we can actually make products at scale. And then the last one is Embark, which is a software, uh, B2B SaaS software company for non-technical founders. So this is one that we said, okay, if you already have a day job, how can you participate in some of these startup programs, which a lot of times you can't. So we built this program around kind of off hours and nights and weekends to try to teach people how to build software companies. Um, and the last thing we do is we actually support local small manufacturing companies. So traditional manufacturers that are trying to grow their business. We have programs to help them. So across all those different programs, we're probably working with 150 or more different companies uh, each year. And for our listeners, um, about three programs back, we had Matt Foley, who was who runs the Embark program that Jim just talked about for non-technical startups. So if you want to deeper di dive into the Embark program, we have that. And um, and hopefully we can have um, some other guests from NextCore on the program so they can d give us a little bit more. I think it was um, really remarkable. Just uh, uh, last week was the Luminate finals. And one of the neatest things is just the fact that so many people from all over the world come to Rochester for optics and to be part of that program, it, it just gives you a sense of um, of how small the world is and how important Rochester is from that. Do you want to say anything about the Luminator being part of that program? Just because it just, I think it was so recent, I haven't had a chance to celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was great. And it is a great program. We have a national advisory board of, these are really experts in optics and investors and venture funds and corporate partners like Sony and Samsung that are participants. It really is a global program. And to your point, um, the world that, the people in the world that do optics and photonics and imaging, they know that Rochester is one of the strongest regions in the world and they're eager to participate in this program so that they can get connected to the things that are here in our community. So it's great to be in an environment like that and hear about some really amazing companies. Yeah. And, you know, it's a neat little connection as well as that I think sometimes founders get a lot of hype and credit, but you can't really build a company without a team. And one of the neat things about um, Rochester as a community is it has such a capable team to help people grow. What are what are some ways that we can um, strengthen the student relationships to some of these founders? I'm just thinking, you know, if you think of um, companies that have to build out and have maybe second or third facilities or headquarters, Rochester's such a, you know, we have, um, you know, so many uh, universities and colleges nearby and so much talent. I'd really like to talk about how do we strengthen that bridge between the students and the founder communities? The students have always been this great asset. And I know a long time ago, we talked about brain drain in the community. And I, I think the stats actually have kind of turned around since then. But um, as you said, with 80,000 students here, <clears throat> there's a lot of raw material of smart, <laughs> eager people. I think things like um, the Chambers, Campus Rock, all the initiatives they're doing to connect students with companies in town, the College Fest uh, event that they do um, for Groups like ours and others that run programs, even internships can be a great way to get uh, students involved. Our Embark program, to use that one as another example, we had 30 interns for just that one program. Um, I think half from RIT, half from U of R in this year. And they got involved in 100 different projects uh, with these different startups. So it really helps them at least get a taste of what's possible here in Rochester and maybe hopefully entices them to stay here. That's great. And also, I think there there also is um, in Innovation Square, which is another facility yes. that is now kind of building capacity for students to live downtown and and to to be able to um, physically collaborate much easier with the city. So there's a there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot that's been built. I just think it's really neat that you get to see seeds that you planted so very long ago um, be, begin to bear the kind of fruit that you're you're seeing. Um, Let's make it explicit, like Marlon Maine, um, the, we're really wanting to strengthen outside VCs taking a look at Rochester. 
Um, can you also help our audience know why that's so important for our community? Yeah, we. I mean, any startup company um, that's a venture-backed, kind of going to be a scalable company, um, they need to find resources and contacts and connections and a network and investors. And, um, you know, obviously we have several really great venture funds and angel funds here in Rochester and across upstate New York, but not nearly enough to support all the different kinds of companies coming out of Rochester these days. Um, and so we need to continue to do what we can to build those networks. I would say our, our connectivity on the West Coast is probably um, less than it could be compared to Boston, New York, and some other places, which are just easier. Um, we have had a lot of investors starting to invest in companies in Rochester. We pulled some stats the other day. So since 2018, I think there have been almost 100 deals done in Rochester companies by 150 different investors. But again, probably not too many of those are West Coast investors. So we need to continue to build that network. And with the investor network also comes connections to potential corporate partners or customers or you name it, mentors, new CEOs that companies might need. So all those things are just critical. And the more we continue to expand the network through things like, you know, Marlon Maine and connecting to the West Coast, um, the better off we'll all be as an ecosystem. This is our inaugural Marlon Maine that'll be on November 4th. Um, if you look at key indicators for you to say um, we are making a difference, can you let, let us know kind of what's what are some things that'll let you know that that we are beginning to make a difference with that bridge building that we hope to do? Yeah, well, I, I envision this massive bridge in my brain <laughs> between that, right? <laughs> across the country. I love um, I think, you know, key indicators will come. I'm a, I'm a big believer in small steps and momentum. And so I don't want to have unrealistic expectations from the very inaugural event. However, um, I think that as we build the relationships and as we identify some potential first steps, like oh, I just heard about this really interesting company. I also know some people in that industry. Let me make some introductions. I think if we can make some introductions, get some meetings set up between East Coast, West Coast as a result of these kinds of sessions, that'll be a great early indicator that, yeah, there's a really a lot of opportunity here and, and something we should be pursuing. Oh my gosh, Jim, I'm thinking, I love the statement you just said, um, small steps toward momentum. And yeah. I just, I just feel like that that might even be the name of this podcast. I just love it. That's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm trademarking that, by the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, everyone, you heard it here first with Jim Sinal, <laughs> the president of NextCore and also managing director of uh, Rochester Angel Network. Um, I'm so very happy that all of you have tuned in uh, through audio, and I'm so hopeful to meet as many of you as possible on Friday, November fourth. Um, I want to thank Startup Grind Rochester, Upstate Venture Connect. Upstate Capital of New York, NextCore, of course, Rochester Institute of Technology, University of Rochester, for all of your partnership with Marl Startup Studio in supporting this uh, entrepreneurship tipping point that we are building here in Rochester. Finally, I'd like to thank our producer, Scott Fitzgerald at RockVox Studio. If you have an idea and want to know more about our program, Con connect with me, Jennifer, at moralaccelerator.com. Please subscribe to our program, and we will continue to provide information and inspiration about taking your idea from a concept to a business. This is Jennifer Sertle. Thanks for joining us. Okay.